Our first speaker tonight is Jeff Bosley. Jeff is a film and television actor with an extensive background and training originating on the stage where he was nominated and won many awards and accolades, including the Theater Recognition Award, the Theater Service Award, and two nominations for Best Actor. His current work and projects have earned him major roles, transporting him to international movie sets and Cannes Film Festival screenings. Proud theater geek turned Army Special Forces, Green Beret, turned Medal of Valor, earning firefighter, and now back to actor. Jeff has put in every ounce of life experience he can, which translates to all he does on screen as an actor and behind the camera as a director and producer. Without any further delay, here is Jeff Bosley. All right, well, welcome everybody that's here. Um, like uh, Camden said, uh, thank you for coming to this. It is the Define and Achieve Success. And I'm kicking it off with my talk on my definition of success and pretty much what I call how burning boats can burn bridges. So here we go. <clears throat> Every night I go to bed in, in, and inadvertently reflect on the successes and failures of my day. Not because some self-help guru told me to and not because some celebrity told me that's what you're supposed to do. I do it because I'm wired that way. Call it a hot wash or an after action review, whatever it is, it is used to honestly evaluate where I screwed up, what I did right and where I can improve. Doing anything less is lazy and leads to complacency and complacency leads to weakness and inevitable future failure. So what is success? Success as defined by the Oxford Dictionary, the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose, and then the archaic, more uh, ancient definition, which is quite intriguing in today's society, the good or bad outcome of an undertaking. The success to me is to set a goal, to accomplish that goal and repeat as necessary and adjust fire as needed. So where did it all start for me? Ribbons, not the kind you put in your hair, but the ribbons they actually gave away for sports when you did well in them back in the day. I remember there was being a first, second, third, and sometimes a fourth place ribbon. That's it, nothing else. No, nothing from fifth to 10th place. There are only those four ribbons. And without sounding possibly too arrogant, I don't remember any other ribbons than blue. But right or wrong, this was success to me. Winning was the definition of success early on. Now, like I said, this is pre-social media. Influence and inspiration was just limited to film, TV, and sports. However, for me, my need to win and succeed ironically came from peer pressure and a passive, this is what success looks like in environment from, and, and from the black and white winning and losing that sports gave me. Now, I won't lie. I'm sort of ashamed for how much power and influence I allowed others to inflict on me. By no means was I bullied, but I'll be damned if I wasn't susceptible for falling for what others deemed as successful. Now, unfortunately, that need to fit in or whatever it was, it drove me to search out approval through success and through goal setting. Seeing value in those who made the basketball team or who were first string on the football team led me to associate such acts as being successful. So those things became goals that I would later use to define what was and was not successful. If I didn't make the basketball team, I failed. If I wasn't a starter in football or soccer, I failed. And those were my bars to live up to. Those were my goals to achieve. Those were everything I'd set up to do. If I didn't make it, i.e. succeed, it was chalked up to failure and I'd try again after training and working to be better than the other guy. This is a little old, but how's the joke go? Two guys spook a bear and it starts chasing them. They run. One guy stops and switches to running shoes rather than keeping his hiking boots on. The other guy says, what are you doing? Those aren't gonna help you outrun a bear. Running, guy, running shoe guy replies with, I don't have to outrun a bear, I just have to outrun you. So that's not to say success has to be some malicious or backstabbing event, but I firmly believe that tough decisions must be made. Look at the successful climbers of Everest. If someone in their party dies, the survivors must keep going, period. Success is hard, losses will happen. You must be willing to step over the dead. You didn't cause their death. Now, does it have to be this extreme? God, no, <laughs> trust me. Do you have to have some giant goals or, or things that you have to accomplish? Hell no, your goals are yours. They don't have to be a value system. A child's success at getting a gold star is as important to another person's dream of becoming a Green Beret or even hopefully some successful actor. You own your success. Now the catch, however, is how you handle it. 
Admittedly, I've spent most of my life putting goals and successes on some life-altering podiums that must be accomplished or I consider myself a failure. It's the burn your boat story. Lee Hoff, quote, the concept of burning boats traces back to one of history's most inspiring leadership stories of 1519. Hernan Cortez led a large expedition consisting of 600 Spaniards, 16 or so horses, and 11 boats to Mexico. The goal, capture treasure said to be held there. Upon arrival, Cortez made history by destroying his ships. This said to clear message to his men. There is no turning back. They either win or they perish. Although you might assume that Cortez's men would have become despondent with no exit strategy in place to save their lives, they instead rally behind their leader as never before. Within two years, he succeeded in his conquest of the Aztec Empire. Some date the concept further back in history to the times of Julius Caesar, in his conquest of England, or even the ancient Greeks. Regardless, the scenarios and impacts were similar. At its essence, Burning boats represents a point of no return, a psychological commitment where you recognize that you have crossed a line that you can never cross back. There's no hedging, no looking over your shoulder, and everything now, all thoughts and all efforts must be focused on succeeding in this new reality. Hebrew tradition teaches a similar value. In ancient times, Israelite armies would besiege enemy cities from three sides only. Leaving, leaving, leaving open the possibility of flight. They understood that so long as the enemy saw that they had an escapable, they would not fight with the utmost urgency and earnestness. In most cases, it's played right into the besiegers' hands." End quote. It's pretty intense, right? Now, a lot of us can understand that and relate to it, and a lot of us might not be able to. But now imagine being probably not ideal, and it certainly leaves room for work on the avoidance of extremes. But I would rather have that extreme as my foundation than the alternative, a calm, nonchalant approach to success. Some might even call it the secret or it's up to the universe approach, if you will. Now, lessening this extreme approach has always been a struggle for me and a lot in my ilk. I've learned and I'm still practicing that it's okay to set intense goals and work relentlessly towards a successful accomplishment of them but I know I now need to digest the outcomes a little less intensely. The Stoic philosopher Chrysippus said, this is the very thing which is up to the happy person and the well-flowing life. When the affairs of life are in every way tuned to harmony between the individual divine spirit and the will of the director of the universe. Does that mean you release things to the universe and no longer take responsibility for your actions, your outcomes? No, absolutely not. I despise that. However, it does mean busting your ass in every way possible, in any way possible that you have a say in, that you can control and that you can direct. Then, and now this is the hard part for me, realizing there are other things in the equation you can't control. Now that is what I strive for. Putting my head to the pillow at night knowing I did everything in my power and that all the other crap isn't in my control. And that is peace that is success. So it may be obvious at this point, my approach to success has been pretty intense. Such a black and white belief system in success can lead to amazing victories. But with that has to come some soul crushing defeats. You see, I believe that chase success should be the size of gold. It could be the gold star, or green beret, or a career that's or a career in an out of control business. Either way, go at an 11. Anybody in my age knows the spinal tab joke. This one goes to an 11. So anything less is letting yourself down. The downside to this, when you are peaking at an 11, the drop is much higher than had you coasted at a three or four all the time. Now, is that a good thing? I don't know, trust me. But to paraphrase a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger, regret sucks. And now with today's society, I feel all too often people play it safe, risk less, get less, and define success in a very mediocre, mediocre fashion. Again, that's not to say success perception needs to be some sort of competition. If someone wants to work for the sanitation department, come home at 5 p.m. and barbecue on the weekends, that's fine. Success isn't judgment. 
the pursuit of success and the settling on lesser successes out of fear or safety, that is worthy of self-reflection and self-judgment. Now, why half-ass anything? Ron Swanson, Parks and Rec, why half-ass it? Full asset. <laughs> Life doesn't have to be some Rocky style training montage of awesomeness. But each person's success on the other side of the equal sign sure as hell better be rewarding and satisfying. The casual pursuit of comfort induced goals only leads to mediocrity and 10th place ribbons. Now that certainly comes across like everyone must set a goal and accomplishment and be considered a success in my eyes. That's not the case. Absolutely not. Success to me is the whole package, the setting of a goal, the pursuit of it, and ideally the achieving of it. Now, if not regrouping, trying again, that's also a success. Sometimes even just that come to Jesus talk that make one thinks one think to themselves, all right, I tried my absolute hardest. I'm going to call it and move on to another goal. All of that is success in spite of the outcome. That process is the missing intensity in modern society's inertia, in my opinion. So two amazing men in my own right, in their own right, summarize it best. Only those who dare fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Robert F. Kennedy. And success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. Now it has taken me well, <laughs> well into my adult life to see that the accomplishment of the goal is not the definition of success. It's a hard way to live, it's exhausting, but it has become very wired in my brain. In fact, I remember when I donned my green beret, I was talking with a small group of people how, how happy I was to never have recycled selection. And for those of you who don't know, selection is basically the tryouts we go through, which is extremely miserable, and then those allow us to continue the training to hopefully then become a green beret. So it occurred to me that yes, I was successful in trying out and then earning my green beret, but I had to sincerely hand it to the, to the people who had tried out, didn't make it, and then were offered a chance to try again. They were called recycles. The fortitude to go through that hell again, knowing what's in store, that is absolutely a success. To go through that pain all over again and then earn the green beret. Now, on the flip side, when I was in the firefighter academy, I was back in familiar territory with obstacles and tests and phases and so on. It was here I could look at the experience as an outsider for the first time because of my age and my experience. I had been through before, albeit much younger and much less physically damaged. But this time I could see the trials for what they were. Inherently, yes, success for me was to finish and become a firefighter that burn the boats mentality isn't ever going to go away. But this was the first time I could see someone quit through an older set of eyes, a set of eyes that has been exposed to a world of successes and failures and everything in between. Specifically, an individual approached me offline. And what I mean by that is I was in charge of something. Um, it had, uh, the oldest person had come to me in the academy and the cadre had put me in charge quite often, sometimes, I think it was as a joke, seeing as the training captain, he was also a former Green Beret, as a matter of fact, but I took it seriously nonetheless. This individual asked me for counsel regarding continuing or quitting. Um, sorry, I think everybody can still hear me. <laughs> I'll keep going. I haven't heard anything that says stop. Um, so this person was a little older too, and by that, I mean not a fresh-faced 20-year-old. This person had led some life and had, had enough experience to know that that come to Jesus moment was in her life at this time. After talking with this person, they eventually did tap out and quit. Now, the young Jeff would have called this a failure. Yes, the goal of this person to become a firefighter did not happen. However, with my more, dare I say, mature approach to, the, to success and regret, I can safely say this person went to bed at night with a clear conscience that they did the right thing a success in its own right. Failure isn't fatal, but failure to change might be John Wooden. So this person changed and course corrected is all. No harm in that. I didn't have to step over this person's dead corpse on the way to Everest. I continued on at my goal. They went on to redefine their goal and succeed in its outcome. You see, I truly believe that some people spend so much time obsessing over a goal that they should no longer pursue, that it becomes so severely depressing when they don't actualize the accomplishment and success they sought. 
I'm guilty of it too. I can smell my own kind. Trust me. I'm wired to consider this, this approach as giving up. But therein lies my respect for this firefighter candidate. The redefining of success led to success and likely more happiness as a result. Success is trying. Success is doing. And I know this becomes a little Tony Robbins TED talky, but I would rather, like I said, put my head to the pillow at night knowing I tried my damnedest and my hardest. But it's the paralytic fear that, that prevents an individual from trying at all is what appalls me. Now, I've been crucified for a line I said in a speech another time where I had said, the goal is to compete, to succeed, and to win. Now, it's from a talk I'd done in the past, and I still believe it. But I know, know some people are raised or wired to life as a kitchen. During a conversation where Billy Crystal's character says, it isn't a competition. The other character basically says, yes, it is. Life is a competition. This spoke to me so perfectly, and I was only 13 years old at the time, and I've been that way before and ever since. Now, does this come from nature or nurture? Who knows? It's not like I was raised in some cliche small town in Texas where football was life. My dad beat me into success, and my parents gave me this win-at-all-cost attitude. They were very nurturing and very uh, neutral, if you will. So I argue it could be self-taught, right, wrong, or indifferent. Maybe it's just one of those things. Some people are one way. Other, people's are, other people are another. I mean, okay, any vet watching this here today, we get having a mission. Even before I joined the army, I needed a goal and a mission that I could then dedicate my existence to in that goal. Sometimes it was for a tryout. Sometimes it was for making a team. Sometimes it was for some weird fitness goal. But most often it was for a career move. Whatever it was, it translated in my mind as competing said task would lead to success. And anything less is failure. And again, that all or none belief system leads to some amazingly great wins and some amazingly painful losses. I do argue, however, that sometimes that attitude is needed. Look at brain surgeons. Would you rather have the one that pursues perfection at all costs, that probably has a failed marriage and has a lot of social anxiety issues because they are so obsessed with perfection when it comes to brain surgeon? Or do you want that brain surgeon that is a very nonchalant brain surgeon that's just kind of whimsical and hopes the universe guides them in their surgery on the brain? I want the guy that has a failed relationship and a messed up marriage because he's so obsessed with success on brain surgery. Now, this brings me to a word that makes me cringe, even though I know it should be my new goal, my next success, dare, dare I say, balance. I hate that word. <laughs> I used to say that if perfection can be perceived, it can be achieved. That's a pretty hard way to live. Zero balance to be had there at all. So my boat burning wiring has always worked for me in the careers I've chosen, where there was loosely a one-to-one -one ratio of work with equaled, uh, equaled what would, results would come out of that work. I worked my ass off. I be became a Green Beret. I did the same, became a firefighter. Burning my, wo my boats worked and worked well. Then I had to throw a wrench into it and chase some goofy childhood dream in Hollywood to act. Now, this is a business and a world and a city that does not initially care about work ethic, skill, or relentless pursuit of success. This city and industry painfully forced me to learn and find that proverbial balance, that redefinition of success in a way that keeps me from living day in and day out in this failure mentality. Now, admittedly, it has forced me to truthfully evaluate evaluate what I said earlier. Did I do everything in my to be best and do my best? If I can answer yes to that, the millions of other things that are out of my control need to be brain dumped. Now, it's much easier said than done than for the guy who's been living this way for 42 years. I went from one extreme set of conditions that, where the definition of success and failure worked immaculately to another extreme set of conditions where black and white boat burning approach does not work. Nothing like going the hard way and then being forced to look at success differently. Typical me, though, and many like me, I will have to say, burn the boats and go all in. And in the Hollywood business, it's unlike anything in my past. I can get the audition. I can go do all the control and powerful things in my control and still not get the job. Maybe I'm too tall. Maybe I remind the decision makers of an ex that they don't like. There are tons of other things out of my control, and it kills me. And this is the one business where there's so much out of my control that forces me to realize, focus on the things I can. 
So these Hollywood experiences of success and failures combined with my military and fire experiences of success and failure create the perfect, dare I say, balance of defining success. Setting goals, chasing them, busting your ass to do all in your power and not letting go and letting go of the rest that you can't change. That is my new definition of success. It doesn't have to be some big grandiose thing that you see on TV, a, a green beret, a car or a job. It's what is it, what it is in your mind. And concluding, success is taking the military approach of having the best laid plans and then adapting to the changes when inevitably all hell breaks loose. Mission accomplishment isn't always what we think it needs to be and some def and of some specific definition to be successful. Success is self-evaluation and integrity. Are you changing plans because of an honest moment of taking fire that is out of your control? Or are you kidding yourself and just looking for a way to justify quitting? It is what you make it. Do you feel you succeeded in what you set out to do? Now that's on you and what goes through your mind at night before your head hits the pillow. So good luck. That's all I got. <laughs> and yeah, we have questions. I don't know, Camden. All right. Yeah. For those that you're watching, there's a bunch of 60 minute coaching sessions, 30 minute coaching, coaching se sessions for, uh, for, uh, silent auctions there. What's up, Cannon? Hey, Jeff. Thank you very much. Great job on that. And, uh, we do have a couple quick questions as before awesome. I move on. So, uh, first, and, uh, so really a two parter here, what is your greatest or favorite success story in your life? Um, Honestly, and especially on today's event and today's topic, um, I would say this regardless of what the event is. It wasn't getting my Green Beret. Like it, that, that was, that's almost too easy. But I remember during SEER training, um, for those who don't know, it's basically training where we learn to go be prisoners of war, live off the land, and just it's, it's, it, it, it's the most humbling and painful experience of my life that truly lets you know what mental and physical and spiritual metaphorical torture you can sustain. And it's, it's, it does such a good job in it where you truly question yourself, where you really wonder if I can do this. And there was a moment um, at the end of it, we, I can't give away too much, but there was, you never knew when it was over. It's not like, oh, I can't wait for Friday to be done. It's, and we're out of here. We can go put on clothes and quit being beaten and, and actually have real food. You just were like, I don't know how long I'm here. I don't know how long it's been. And we went into a do our thing one day and we thought it was just going to be the same day where I was probably going to get one of the things they, they smacked me around for being too tall. And so I was the tallest guy. So I was smacked around a lot. And I, I thought it was just going to be another one of those days. And they had us basically stand in a formation in about face. And I, you know, we all just cringed and flinched and knew something was coming. And then they start played, start, they raised the American flag and that symbolized we had finished it. And that wasn't the end of the green beret training and tryouts, but that was the biggest chill inducing even to this moment day where I realized I had done something I never thought I could do again. Yeah, I could see how that would be a very powerful moment. Uh, and then yeah. the second part of that is what then is your greatest or favorite uh, failure story of failure? <laughs> I was worried that was going to be it. <laughs> and, and you, you can segue into overcoming that failure if you need to. Yeah, no, I, 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 um, I think for me, uh, being self-critical, I, I can't, my biggest failures aren't, I can't identify a specific one. I, mm -hmm. as I'm getting older and COVID and, you know, some weird realization of how old I'm becoming and you start to becoming your father and you're like, oh, I remember, I wish I would have, could have. My biggest, I guess, failures are that looking back on delaying out of mm -hmm. fear. And I, I've, I've said this constantly, but one of my favorite things was Jim Carrey made a comment of like, don't live a life of fear disguised as practicality. And that is my biggest failure, generically speaking, was I put off a lot because of that fear delay. And so those are my failures. And and like I said in this in this in the talk, I'm very self-critical and really hard on myself. And I took that as a failure and it was black and white and I sucked. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have. I'm still I guess, like you said, the way I overcame that was I eventually still did it, you know, albeit it was a little harder and more painful and whatever because of the delay, but fear, fear, failure, I guess would be my biggest mm -hmm. thing. And I overcame it by still just sucking it up and doing it. 
Okay. Well, awesome, Jeff. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, great oh, talk. No. And thank you for uh, helping us to support the Green Beret Foundation tonight. Oh, honor to be here, everyone. Keep it up.